Hi there. So the previous Cloud Labs video was all about setting it up, getting that Azure component, all of the stuff for Cloud Labs set up in your environment using the, the guidance from MS Endpoint Manager. If you're wondering what Cloud Labs is, and if you're sitting there saying, Dean, that's brilliant, but I don't know what Cloud Labs is, well, check out the previous video, because that's where I go into what it's all about, why it exists, why it's brilliant, and we go through how to configure it in a step-by-step -step sort of format. But this one is going to look at configuring it as an admin would, so setting those little tweaks to specify the password length and update frequency, that kind of thing, and also then testing it out to make sure it actually sets a password, and testing it out to make sure that we can retrieve that password and then use the password in a VM or in live normally for most of us once it's once it's finished being configured. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, so if I jump straight into this this uh, configuration, so I mentioned there is some some configuration that we might want to set things like the uh, allowed characters within the password, the password length, um, not this one, we don't need that. Uh, the update frequency in days is, you know, these are all set uh, in the function app, and that's where you would normally, you know, in in, in the full version of Laps, you would uh, not full, in the um, in the group policy version of of on-premise Laps, you would set these in group policy, but here we set them in the function app, so that's where we do that. You can also set debug logging to um, to true here as well if you wanted to, because that would allow me to do some debugging if I was testing this out for the first time, which is exactly what I'm doing now. So we'll we'll do that. So yeah, I mentioned that I've got a, uh, a virtual machine in the previous video that is in the, the pilot group for Cloud Labs. So we'll head over to that virtual machine and um, try and trigger some kind of proactive remediation for it to create that local admin account for us. So we'll go there now. So over to that machine. And what I'll do is I'll just trigger the MDM policy to re refresh, pull down the latest policy so that it pulls down the fact that it's in a group, because I've only just put this computer into the group for the purpose of this test. And while we do that, I'll just verify that it has no account called local admin. It very possibly does have an account called local admin already, because it's a very sensible thing to call your local admin account. But let's take a look. So we don't have uh, a local admin account as yet. What we're expecting is that the proactive remediation will kick in and detect that it doesn't exist, do all the stuff it does in the detect script, and then run the remediation script to fix that. So let's think about how this proactive remediation is going to be triggered on this device. Well, I thought I'd take a look at the proactive remediation configuration itself. So we had here, and you can see that originally I'd set it to um, to, to trigger at 1 a.m. because that was the default and that was what was in the documentation and that obviously isn't going to help me right now when I'm trying to demonstrate it at 10 p.m. in the evening. So um, just before 9 o'clock I changed it to 9 p.m. as you can see down here and uh, updated the client so that it was um, so that it had that information in the proactive mediation settings wherever they are. Uh, and so it took a little while. It didn't happen at nine o'clock. It happened around about 10 to 10, so about 50 minutes late. But what we saw is, I'll just head over to the screen. You can see what we saw is that um, this uh, user was created and that wasn't there before. You you would have just seen that a few minutes ago. It hadn't, it, it wasn't there before. Um, and the following event log was also created around about that time as well. So let's take a look at what is in this event log. So it starts then. Uh, so local admin account password rotation started. Give the device identifier and uh, calling an API. Doesn't exist, attempt to create it. Adding local admin account to security group administrators and it's completed. I mean that you know, that sounds pretty much exactly what we were hoping for. So that looks like it's possibly done the, the trick. Uh, what I'll do now is just log out and log back in as, no, I won't. I'll just elevate to local admin using the password that I find in the Laps Admin UI. Of course, it's not called the Laps Admin UI anymore, is it? Um, in the Cloud Laps portal. Let's jump into that. So we'll just head into the 
uh, the Cloud Labs portal, which is in my case, it's this this website here, and uh, I'm signed in, so that's good. And I'll just refresh that page. Good. So we go to home, exactly the same as that. Go to search, and we now, if it's a virtual machine, which it is, we can search for the computer name, which is Get Modern, I think. Maybe I need the whole computer name. Search return an empty list of secrets. That's a sad dash eight five two four one. There you go. Okay, so we've got um, we've got the computer name, the serial number, which is the computer name, the username, which is local admin, the last update at eight fifty one p.m., which is uh, UTC. So that's an hour before my time now. And this is the password here in bold text, which is lovely. So we're going to use local admin and this password here. Jump into here. Okay, so let's do a quick test. I'm going to run this as um, I'm not. Uh, right, well, I might as well just log out and log back in then. So uh, I can't elevate, unfortunately. I'm going to go with dot slash local admin and the password I'm going to copy and hope it will paste by the clipboard. There it does. That's the password there. And is it letting me in? I think it might be letting me in. Well, that's good, isn't it? Uh, well, so that seems to have worked. Now, there's there's a ton more customization you can do with this, but that's the the, the, the core functionality of what Laps did has just been demonstrated. And it didn't take me that long to do. You know, this demonstration here of, of it working has only taken a few minutes with a bit of wait time in between where I did some other things. But the, the configuration, you if you've seen the previous video, only took 20, 25 minutes to go through. So that's a, a, huge, a huge improvement on the manual stuff you might need to do. And it's also, um, I think quicker than laps from what I remember of implementing laps in the past, the, the real laps that was on premise. So yeah, there's not a lot more I can say about this other than fantastic job to Nikolai and the MS Endpoint Manager team. Um, yeah, please hit the like button. I'll see you next time.